concepts that you may have uh, not had your hands in before and how to uh, analyze what's happening there and uh, reconvert it or reconfigure it to meet your needs. Uh, ground rules, once again, for anybody new this week, uh, we cannot take any live questions, although there is a question box uh, on the right-hand side in your control panel where you can type in a question, and we'll try to uh, answer it online here today or, uh, or get back to you with an email. By all means, if there's something that you see today that you have a question about, or how that might apply to your individual radio station, by all means, uh, contact uh, your music scheduling consultant or uh, give us a, uh, an email exchange here, and uh, we'll get back to you as soon as possible with some answers on your specific situation. So without further ado, I think we'll get started right away. It's an hour in length today, um, and our presenter is Paul Zeno. Uh, go ahead, Paul. Let's talk about tools and uh, maintenance on your database. Thanks, Mark. Uh, I don't know how often anybody says the lovely Paul Zeno, but I appreciate it. <laughs> uh, welcome. We're going to talk, like Mark said, about tools and maintenance today. Uh, things like making backups in your database, how to keep the database nice and tight so that everything's moving as efficiently as possible, as well as going into the tools menu and showing you some of the different things that you can adjust and kind of customize for yourself. For starters, we're here at the Data File Manager screen, which is likely one of the uh, first screens you see when you open the software, where you can choose the database you wish to work in. A common thing that we like to see and have people do is copy their databases. Uh, you're doing a format tweak. Maybe you're trying a whole new idea behind your clocks. Instead of doing it in your live data, you could always do this in a copy of your live data. We sometimes will refer to it as the sandbox copy. And the best way to do that is to clone your database, and it gives you an exact duplicate of what you're working in, and you just simply make it your own. So we're going to take this database called Tools and Maintenance here, and I'm going to clone it, and we'll appropriately call it April Fools. And there's our April Fools database. We can go ahead and open that up, and this is an exact duplicate of the tools and maintenance database that I had. The only difference is the database name up at the top here indicates it's the April Fools database. So now we can do all the things we want to in this database and not worry about affecting our live data. If you're inheriting a database from somebody, <clears throat> say a sister station or another market does the same format that you're switching to, you get a copy of their database as a starting point. One of the things you might want to do is start by getting rid of all their old histories. Here's how to go about doing a history purge. We're going to come up to the data set menu, select schedule, and then purge history. Now within purge history, we sometimes get an error. Let's try that again. <laughs> All right, we should be back at it now. So within data set schedule and purge history, this gives us the opportunity to see what our active history is as well as what our archive history might be. The difference between the two, active is the history that's being tested by the database. When you are scheduling your logs, Music Master looks back at your past histories for rules such as offset windows for day offset and play offset, minimum rest, and many other rules are history based. And this is the history that's being tested, that which is in the active history. The archive history is available for rule for uh, reporting and those sorts of purposes, but it's not being tested actively by the software. I told you a moment ago that you could actually clear out all the history and begin from, from square one as far as your history is concerned. The way to do that is to click the clear all button down here in the lower left corner of the history purge window. When we do that, you do get the warning indicating if you do this, you wipe it all out, and there's no way to get it back. So we're going to say no here. We're not going to bother doing the clear all. If we run purge at this point, it's going to take, in effect, what our settings are here. Minimum days of active history to retain is set at 90. This is the defaults in the software, by the way, 90 days and 8 song histories to retain. This would say that at any time we'll have at least 90 days of active history for the program to test. And we'll have at least 8 song plays 
within those 90 days. So if we have only six plays in the 90 days, it's going to retain eight total plays for testing purposes. A little checkbox here for automatically purge history when necessary. Very important. Right now, you'll see my active history goes all the way back to December 23rd through April 8th. So I'm scheduled through next week, Wednesday at this point. Um, if we were to automatically schedule a log afterwards, the program would be allowed to automatically purge out the excess history. So we have roughly 100 days of history in here right now. If we were to auto schedule logs, it could purge out the excess history and bring us back down to 90. Might not bring us all the way down to 90, but that's the minimum history that we're going to retain. At this point, we're just going to click OK on this and let it do it when it needs to next time we run the automatic scheduler in the program. Jumping up to the tools menu, our very first option here is backup. Backup is a very important feature. That's why I made sure to present this towards the top of our presentation today. Because I'm going to tell you a little story about a guy named Dave who called me up about a week ago and said, hey, Paul, just got back from the weekend and went to log into Music Master and I have no data. My engineer tells me we've lost our entire network. Everything is gone. What do I do? Well, I said to Dave, well, just restore a backup. Well, Dave's been making all of his backups by running a standard backup. Standard backup simply takes your database file, puts it into a zip folder, and drops it where you keep your database. In Dave's case, the database was stored on his network. That same network that crashed over the weekend, they've lost everything. So it's not always adequate to run a standard backup. It's a good idea to do a standard backup on a regular basis, daily, maybe even more than once in a day, depending on what kind of work you're doing in the program. But you also have the opportunity to do custom backups. So if we run a standard backup, we get the warning that if any of the windows are open, they're going to close when we run this. We'll just click yes, and you see the progress down here in the bottom left. And our backup's complete. If we come back to tools and backup, it tells us our last backup was run right now, April 1st at 1.07 p.m., and the backup file is musicmasterapilfools.zip. This is where we can get into custom backups. Custom backups allow you to include additional files. Let's put it wherever you need to. You can have as many custom backup profiles as needed. You just select the one you want and hit perform the custom backup, and it's going to create that. So let's create a backup profile, shall we? Click on the Create button, and I'm going to start by making this my network backup. So we're going to pretend that our network is the X drive, and I'm going to call this aprilfools.zip. Definition files, I'm going to include those. Definition files are used for reconciling, for um, importing your library, as well as for importing traffic information if you have traffic merge enabled in your, soft, in your database. Those definition files, if you don't say yes, you are not included in the backup. So in Dave's situation, he wasn't making a backup that included his definition file. So in addition to not having any library to work with, no clocks, no history, he also had no definition files where he could even import anything or export anything. He was really sunk. Making a custom backup profile like this, we'll call it network like I said, and we'll just click OK. I also recommend to people that they make backups to a variety of locations. You're going to do your standard backup, which just puts it in the same directory where your music master is installed. You can do another backup to a special directory on your network. I also recommend doing them to possibly a USB jump drive. In a lot of cases, those USB drives, we'll call it an E drive here, will be on your E or F drive most likely. And you just simply type in your drive and then the name of the file. And do we want to include the definition files or not? We'll say yes. Password protection, if you don't want other people to be able to access the backup, you can turn that on, and then it will prompt you to include a password in order to unzip that backup file. 99% of the time, that's not necessary. Also, you generally don't need a file name prompt either. If there are any other files you want to backup, you can include that in your backup as well here, just by simply indicating what those additional files are. Another feature that I recommend people do is make a daily backup so that when you're done working in your database on Monday, you make a Monday backup. 
done working it on Tuesday, make a Tuesday backup. The advantage of that is not only do you have your local backup and your network backup, but then you also have a specific one for each day of the week. So God forbid one of your backups is corrupt or doesn't work or it's lost or you can't access it. Have that daily backup. You're only going to be down 24 hours, maybe 48 if one of those backups is bad. But it gives you plenty of opportunities to find another location. So in that case, we could do our Monday backup. like so, and we'll just call that Monday, and we'll include the definition files. And then do the same thing for Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and so forth. So now every day when you're done working in Music Master, you might want to run the network backup and your daily backup for Monday or for Tuesday, and then you might even want to do your e-backup as well. The advantage of having all these is that you're not going to lose your data as readily and as possibly as if you didn't have backups. Better to have more than you need than not have what you're going to need in the long run. Dave was really sunk. He ended up having to start his database from zero. He did find a backup from November. Mind you, this was the third or fourth week of March that he called me. So he had a backup from November. However, during that time, they had made significant clock changes, lots of new songs added, and they were missing all of that history. Almost did a format tweak as well in that period of time. So. Who's to say he was going to actually get all those songs imported and then put back into the categories where he, re where he had had them before he lost his database. So it's a real good idea to keep lots and lots of backups. Might not even be a bad idea to do a monthly backup and take it home with you. That way in the event uh, the unforeseeable happens at the station and you lose everything or you know, case of, uh, case of emergency or disaster, you have a backup there available to you in the event you need it at home as well. Select your backup, it perform a custom backup, and off it goes. So after you've made that backup, how do you restore it? Well, that's why we have the restore option here on your tools menu. Select the backup you wish to restore. This is the one that we created at the beginning of our presentation today. Just hit restore the selected file, and it will restore that, pro that database file. If that's not the one you want, you can use the three-dot box here on the right side click on it and you can switch the directory that you're coming from and where you want to pick those things up from and so forth. Keep in mind if your backup file contains a database called xyz.mmd and you're trying to restore xyz into a database called abc they won't restore properly. You'll need to create a new database out of that. But if you're restoring the same database on top of itself this is how you would go about doing it. Tools and purge. A lot of people ask is how do we do housekeeping, how do we do inspect, how do I get this to make sure it's running efficiently. That's what purge does. You know your engineer or your IT person periodically will run a defrag on your hard drive or a defrag on the network drive or something like that. This is kind of similar to that. It basically goes through your database, compacts it down into as tight a little unit as it possibly can, getting rid of any garbage space that's involved there, and allows it to work more efficiently. So tools purge, when you do that, uh, basically runs through, it's an equivalency to a, like a compact and repair facility, or function rather, in Microsoft Access. When you do this, starting in the next release of Music Master, I actually have a preview of 4.0 SR16 that we're running today on this presentation. Down here in the bottom corner, where it says ready, it's going to give us a progress report. Let us know what's being purged and our final percentage of what was purged. So we'll go ahead and hit yes here and let it run the purge. It's telling us it makes a backup. Now it's purging unused keywords, deleting things, unused space now. And you'll see down here at the bottom we had a 20% reduction in the size of our database and the purge is now complete. Tools purge is also used if you run into odd errors in Music Master. You might call your music scheduling consultant here and they will recommend that you run a tools purge. Sometimes it can clean up a mistake or an error within the database files themselves. Not always, but oftentimes that could be the fix. So anytime you run into errors that you can't figure out, give your music scheduling consultant a call and they'll help you out. And likely tools purge might be part of their uh, solution or list of solutions for you. Also on the tools list, we've got user list. Good place to look if you get an error saying that the program is open or maybe corrupt or in use on another workstation. 
if you see multiple users listed here, that means it's open somewhere else. You can tell right now that we logged into this uh, today, and this is me logged in here. If you had multiples listed here and you don't believe those people are actually on, or maybe it lists you twice but you don't see it open, just simply restart your machine. Sometimes these licenses get locked open for, for uh, whatever reason. And you can refresh this. So if somebody's logged out, hit refresh and it'll update this screen appropriately. That way if you go to make a backup, you can only have one person in the database when you make a backup or when you run a purge. And this will tell you who else is in there so that you can have them close out before you run any of those functions. We're going to skip over this next group of things here because we're going to discuss the playing song and audio stuff as we go through the tools and options list. The first option we're going to discuss is language and regional settings. Music Master is available to you in a variety of languages. By default, it's in English. We also offer French, German, Polish, Portuguese, and Spanish. A word of warning for you, though. If you switch languages, say to Portuguese, and apply that, next time you open Music Master, it's going to open in Portuguese. So if you do not speak that language, you're going to have a heck of a time trying to get things set back to the way you wanted them. So file view data set and all your menus and all of your descriptions will all be in a foreign language to you. And you might not be able to figure out how to switch it back. So it's a real good idea not to monkey with this setting. But I thought I'd show it to you anyways. Under data set options, we have data set identification. This is where you can rename your database. This is your database logo. Uh, in many situations, you would print the database logo when you are printing your Music Master printed logs or printed log designs or reports and so on. Your logo will be included there. So we can change this to anything we want. For example, we could call this Rock 105. Your audio logo file is a piece of music or any audio that you would like Music Master to play when it opens. So when you launch Music Master from your shortcut, it would play this audio logo file. Graphic logo file is what's going to be displayed back here in this gray box behind us. And all you have to do is click the three dot box here on the far right and select your logo file. We'll take the Music Master Windows logo. I apologize if your screen just reset itself going to reset itself again here. So now you've got your graphic logo file indicated there and if you want to display that just click display graphic logo file and hit apply. So now we've got our music master logo on the screen. If we don't want the white background behind it we can tell it give it a transparent background and hit apply and now we just have the gray background behind it. Additionally we can change this wallpaper color here we can change it to just a specific color or make gradient colors. So if we wanted, we could go from blue and fade to a black. Hit apply. And our wallpaper looks like that with the black, blue and black background behind the Music Master logo. Any GIF or JPEG file and so on is eligible here. You can tell it how you want it displayed. Some people like to have it tiled. So then you get your logo to show up all over the place on that screen. So I'm just like it's stretched, where it fills up that window. Personally, I prefer it centered. That's all on the data set identification. Broadcast week comes in pretty handy because you can have your week start day any day of the week you want, as well as your day start hour. So in this database, I tend to schedule Tuesday through Monday. So I'm scheduling, and I schedule all the way through the weekend until Monday, and then my next time I run the schedule, I'm going to schedule Tuesday through Monday again. So I've chosen Tuesday as my week start day. But your typical broadcast calendar starts on Monday, so you might want it to be that way. Or your typical calendar starts on Sunday, so you might want Sunday to be your week start day. This will change different layouts in the software for you, uh, such as your assignment grid, uh, day part restriction grid, when you go to automatically schedule a log, your calendar will start with Sunday instead of Monday or Tuesday or whatever day you choose here. You can also have it pick a different start hour. A lot of video channels will start at 6 a.m. because their broadcast day runs from 6 a through 5.59 a. So they could set this to be at 6 a.m. instead of midnight. The choice is entirely yours. Whatever makes the most sense for your application is what we would recommend you set here. I'm going to set this for Monday at midnight.
If you've received your Music Master newsletter today, uh, and if you haven't gotten it yet, you likely will. Otherwise, check your, your junk box. Uh, it might have ended up in there by mistake. Make sure you have it whitelisted that you get that Music Master newsletter that we send out to all of our Music Master Windows customers. One of the topics covered in today's newsletter is custom time periods. Custom time periods can be used for different instant analysis features. If you wanted to see the makeup of your males versus females during the business day of 9 to 5, you can set that up here. You can set it up if you happen to be a Canadian station where you have to do some uh, special reporting for your government for the CRTC as far as they want to know spins based on the 6 a to midnight time frame as well as the 6 to 6 time frame. This is where you can set that information up. First hour, let's take our our office hours, for example. We'll start with 9A to 10A, and our last hour will be 4 to 5P. So that'll give us a broadcast time of 9 to 5. And as I mentioned, Canadian customers, 6A to 6P, as well as 6A to midnight. Once you click Apply here, these different time periods will be available to you for instant analysis in the schedule editor, as well as in other places such as uh, custom reports and special history reports. Runtime options is really ideal for video broadcasters. This is where you're able to indicate runtime fractions, things such as frames in addition to minutes and seconds and so on. Audio file options allows you to actually play your audio out of Music Master. If your audio files are playable in Windows Media Player, you can play them from the Music Master audio player. You just simply have to tell Music Master where to find the files and where to find the file names within the database itself. So for example, I have my audio files on my local drive in a, in a directory called audio. So I'll just enter C colon backslash audio. Using this pull down at the far right, we can tell Music Master what field to look for the audio file names. Well, in this database, my audio file names are in a field called audio file. And within that audio file name, I've included the extension of .mp3, .wave, .wma, etc. Whatever I needed there, it's already in there. So there's my audio file name location. I can apply that and hit OK. We'll come up here and click the View menu, and we're going to turn on the audio player. And for whatever reason, I'm having problems with my license key today, which sometimes happens when I open up and use the headset in order to do these webinars. Let's see if it'll let me open the audio player this time. There we go. Let me turn it back on so you can see my screen. Okay, so here's our audio player. So if we open up a music category, I'll just open up my current. If I wanted to play ACDC's Big Jack, I just hit the play button here. And I've got Big Jack playing. You can also turn these song, the audio on and off by using the F12 and Control F12 buttons on your keyboard. And so on. And that's all set up based on your settings under Tools, Options, and then Audio File Options. If you're using an automation system such as Scott Studios or Google Radio Automation, you can set it up so that it looks for your category field as well as your audio number field. Uh, it also would work that way with systems such as Audio Vault and um, Media Touch and some of the others as well. If you have questions about setting that up, your music scheduling consultant will certainly be able to help you do so. Uh, and there's some tricks and whatnot that you can throw in there as well to get it to play that audio. External database links. This allows you to pull up additional files when you are in a different song. In my application here, I have a website field on every song, and I've populated that accordingly. So if I 
click on a different song, the website could potentially appear, assuming that I have the browser turned on. I want to try this one more time here and make sure I can get the web browser to open up. There we go. So now on my web browser, we see McKagan's loaded. There's their website. I switch to ACDC, and the ACDC website will load up here in my web browser. And momentarily, Brian Johnson will greet us. <laughs> there he is. So you can set that up accordingly. That's in Tools, Options, and then under Additional Properties. I'm sorry. That's under External Database Links where you can set that up. Traffic System Interface. This is used if you are merging traffic into your Music Master system. Uh, some automation systems recommend that you actually send a combined file that includes your music as well as your commercial content all in one before it gets to automation. A lot of systems like your Scott Studios and Audio Vaults and so on have a merge program there, be it your SS32 or your AV Scheduler and so on. They use these other merge programs. Either way, you can use traffic merge. It's just a matter of whether or not you actually send the traffic file with your Music Master music file. And this is where you actually turn that on. Your music scheduling consultant can help write the merge definition file. Remember I talked about definition files a little bit ago with custom backups. You can have a definition file written that says, go to the traffic system, find the log for today, and import the traffic information accordingly. This is where you tell it to actually do that. Jumping ahead to library editor options. Two things you can change amongst here. The first one is your info bar options. This bar over here on the left where our categories are listed, that's are called the info bar. And we have the option of having the category groups on top if we check this or on the bottom. The category groups are these here with the double music notes, rotated music, currents, non-music, music categories, and entire library. If we check that box and apply it, those will now be on the top of our list. Unchecked, they go back to the bottom. Query options, when you go to open Music Master's library maintenance using the green music note up here at the top, you could have it automatically populate using your favorite query. Favorite queries are set up right here in the query button with the heart on it. So whatever your favorite query is, whenever you launch the library maintenance using the green music note, it would automatically load that using that favorite query if you so choose. The library search options are couple of different features within the search feature. The first one, find matching values, is using this icon right here. Right now, if we were to click on find matching values, it's going to go through the entire library, including the uncategorized category, and find whatever it is that we have selected. In this case, ACDC in the artist field. So if we were to run that, hit find matching values, it would find all ACDC in the entire database. We can change that to only use the category list from the active query. Our active query right now is the A category. So if we were to do that, it would only find ACDC songs in the A category. We could also tell it to look in specific categories and then check those categories off. We don't want to worry about what's in hold or in uncategorized or in our liner categories. We only want it to look in just our active music, A, B, R, and X, for example. Applying that would then have it, when we click the Find Matching Values, it would only look for whatever we're matching, in this case ACDC is the artist, in these four categories that are selected. Personally, I prefer to leave it at Entire Library. There's two other options we have within this library search options. The first one is the Current Field Query Control Q. If you press Control Q right now, the Current Field Query, our current field that we're in is the Artist Field. So by pressing Control Q, it's going to pull up a query that asks for our artist field, and then we get to choose what artist it is we want. And to let you see that, I'm just going to close that down and press Control Q. And there we go. It populates it, has everything checked as we had indicated. We wanted it to include the entire library, and it already fills in the search filter for artist contains. Control R is the other option there. And Control R is going to include whatever it is that we have selected, in this case ACDC. So it will automatically populate search filter as artist equals ACDC. If we click OK, we're going to get all the ACDC songs in this database, and there they all are. Go 
going back to tools and options and we were talking about library search options and again this is where you can set it for your various settings for control Q and control R we're going to jump ahead to replacement song options within the schedule editor looks the same you just have different options here so when we're in the schedule editor F9 the replacement song search that's the equivalency of doing the double click on an unscheduled position or double clicking to replace something that's already scheduled by default we have it set to use the category of currently scheduled song or element if you'd rather have it search all the categories or a specific list of categories you can adjust that accordingly you can also adjust for direct field values alt F9 and shift F9 Here's that control Q and control R, those same two things, but now it's looking at it within the schedule editor. Find matching value, control 1 and control 2 is for doing special sets or twofers on the fly, or control 1 would be if you just wanted to replace whatever specific item it is. So if you're in the artist field and you press control 1, it would look in the database using that exact same category for any other song that has the same artist on it, if you're in the artist field, or the same title if you're in the title field. If you pressed Control 2, it would look at the item above it so that you could build a twofer. In this case, a lot of times for Control 1 and Control 2, I would recommend doing entire library or all categories or doing a specific category list and then only choosing your music. And of course, you have the option of sorting matching songs by rest. Jumping up one step here to schedule editor options, we have a couple of different things we can look at here. Uh, before I get into that, I'm going to open up the schedule editor so you can see what we're discussing. Open up today's log. So here's our log for today. We'll go into tools and options once again. Schedule editor options. Rule failure search options. These two icons, the little flags with the arrows on them, look for previous failures and find next failure so when we click on either of these icons right now music master set to stop on all rule failures we could also change that if we wanted to stop only on unbreakable failures or only on breakable one and higher or we could bypass any song that's scheduled and only stop on things that aren't scheduled if we chose Additionally, if you wanted to stop on unscheduled positions in addition to rule failures, check that box for stop on unscheduled positions. So now if we were to click on either of these icons in the schedule editor, it's going to stop on any song that fails a rule, as well as any position that's not been scheduled by the automatic scheduler, or is still left as unscheduled. Multi-station conflict, uh, that's used in most cases by, for example, by a network, where you're scheduling multiple databases all for one service uh, maybe a satellite broadcaster would use that so that you don't play the same song on two of your stations at the same time uh, real good idea you can even set it up to make sure you don't play the same song within 10 minutes of itself on two opposing stations or channels that's what multi-station conflict does most situations you won't be using that shift insert when you're in the scheduler if you press shift insert you have a a handful of options as to what you can do. You can start by just selecting from a menu, or you can insert and schedule a song or an unscheduled element and so on. I found in a lot of cases people like to be able to insert their log notes that way. So wherever you are in the schedule editor, press shift insert, and it opens up and you're able to enter a log note line like we see here for back cell, pre cell. Lastly, we have additional options here in your schedule editor options. If you're using optimum scheduling goals, you can have the schedule editor test those for you as well as when you were doing the automatic scheduling. You could have it do it while you're editing your log too. Choice is yours. Uh, if you have it checked, it might take a little longer for it to pull up your replacements. So that's why we give you the option of not testing the optimum scheduling goals by removing that check mark. The description of non-song elements in the secondary field column. I'm going to take this and we're going to switch this around and look at a different view. In this database, I have a primary and a secondary field. My primary field is the title field. My secondary field is the artist field in this database. So right now, all of my non-music items, non-song elements, such as log notes, are displaying their information 
in the title field, like you see back sell, pre sell, and talk break, and traffic merge. All that information is in my primary field, which is title. If I wanted to, in tools and options, and schedule editor options, we could show the description of those non song elements in the secondary field instead. If I apply that and hit OK, and then just simply relaunch that log, all that information. Now on my secondary field, which is artist, you have the option of where you want it to display. And lastly, when you're using song lists in the replacement song window, you can have them display in the song list order as opposed to in most to least rested order, which is the default. If you check that, it'll show up to you in the list in which those songs appear in the song list or saved list. You find those down here under song lists. We're going to keep moving on and look at data set security. A lot of stations have asked us to help them set up their security and they think they've set it up but they've missed a step or something like that. Data set security is, allows you to give different users a username and a password to get into the database and limit what they're allowed to do or what not to do. You to do that, you go to users and rights and create a user. So here's our new user one. They have a username and you give them a password. And then you give them the rights to do different things. Do you want them to be able to do any work in clocks? Within the library, are they allowed to, to delete songs? If not, you leave it unchecked. They can add songs, great. Uh, do you want them to be able to use the chart editor? Field groups 1, 2, and 3 are set up under data set library and fields where you can tell Music Master this is a part of group 1, this is a part of group 2, this is a part of group 3, and then give rights to people so that they can only edit certain fields in the database. Can they edit non-music or songs, and can they export things from the library? If you're a real-time user, what information are they allowed to adjust within real-time? Can they edit the rule tree, or can they only view the rule tree, and so forth? You can have all these different rights, or if it's somebody who needs rights to everything, just make them an administrator, and then it checks everything for you. Once you've set up your users, you need to go back to data set security and enable security. Right now, data set security is enabled in this database. I have a bypass so that I don't have to actually log in every time, but uh, you'll see last time this that Paul logged in was August 25th at 4.24 p.m. Before that it was at 4.17 and before that it was at 4.15 and so on. It keeps track of those logins into the database for you. I'm going to cancel out of there and open up a clock so I can demonstrate a couple other things for us here. We'll open up the sample clock real quick. I'm actually going to close the audio player. Come back here to tools and options. We're going to look at display colors. Within clocks, you can change the way things are displayed. You'll see in this clock I have fixed positions, I have migrating positions, combos, uh, forced position, format list, and so on. Right now, all those different things are displaying as gray elements. It doesn't really mean a whole lot to me, so I can change the colors of those things. Right now, log notes are going to display in, a, in that bright green as well as stop sets and traffic. So I don't have much for stop sets and so on in here, so that's not really showing us much. But we can change the color of our combo position. Click in it and then hit the three dot box, and now we can choose our color. If we want our combo positions to display in this kind of a off blue, hit OK and apply that. And now you see where I have a combo position, and it's now showing up in that light blue color. My format list positions. Right here I have generic next list items. We can give those a special color too if we want. We can make those show up in pink maybe. And there those items are in bright pink. Helps you to be able to see things better in your graphic view for your clock. By default a lot of this is gray, but your music elements that are coming from fixed category positions are going to display with the blue and then the color of the category up here. Back to our library here. If 
for whatever reason, I'm having a real hard time with this today. Let's try that one more time. I'll be right back with the uh, graphic image for you momentarily. My apologies for the delay here. The software for my microphone is giving me problems when using Music Master at the moment. And it looks like I'm back in. So I'll try opening up the library again, and then I'm going to turn on my history graph, come back here into tools and options, and go back to display colors, and we'll come down to history. We can change the coloring here. For example, my weekend color in text is going to be this dark blue, and you'll see that over here Sunday and Saturday are in a blue color. I can change the background color for weekends too. If I wanted to, I can make those in a bluish color as well here. So now when we change from song to song, you'll see that those entire lines show up in blue. Just some of the different coloring changes you can do within the software. We're going to jump ahead all the way down here to this last option, additional properties couple of things in here that I like to discuss with you for a moment under additional properties. Uh, audio player, the scope end, fade, and scope start. This information can be set up so that you can actually scope your log when you are editing. If you wanted to hear the intro of each song, the outro of each song, and the, and the segues between them, you can do that here by telling it how much of the ending do you want to hear in seconds. We'll say we want three seconds of the ending. We want the scope fade out to be two seconds in length, and we want to hear the intro for five seconds, for example. So now if we were scoping from point A to point B, we would hear the three-second outro, a two-second, uh, five-second intro, a two-second fade over before we get to the ending, and then we would hear the crossfade between them. Under general, real cool one to point out here is print preview. I have a client in... New York that works in a huge building and every time he prints something he has to go to a different floor in the building to get his print out. And he called me after using Music Master for two weeks and says, Paul, I just wanted to thank Music Master because since starting on the software I've lost 15 pounds. And I asked why and he said, well because every time I go to print something I run down the stairs, go to the opposite end of the building, go to the printer and nothing's there. So then I run back hit the stairwell, run up the stairs, back to my desk, and realize the print preview is displaying now. I didn't actually go to paper, it went to the print preview, so I have to print it again. And for whatever reason, I'm not learning that I have to print preview and then print it to paper. I said, well, you know what? You could just change this to a zero here, and you'd bypass that print preview altogether. Ever since then, he's put on a bunch of weight, and he's much happier. So, <laughs> so print preview you can disable by putting a zero in that field under general. Also, if you don't like the sound effects in Music Master, you want to turn those off, you can set that to zero as well. I'm going to jump down here to the schedule section. A couple of things I'd like to point out here. Uh, first of all, daylight saving time. Uh, we do this in, uh, in the U.S. every, let's see, I believe it's the second Sunday of March and the first Sunday of November now. If where you live does not abide by daylight saving time, you can disable this entirely by putting a 1. Putting a 1 there skips the daylight savings transitions. So if you don't want Music Master to adjust for daylight savings time, dropping the hour in the spring, adding the or doubling the hour in the fall, that's where you bypass that, that setting a 1 there for ignore DST. When you're in your schedule editor in the replacement list, you will 
if you are filtering your replacement song list using little flag icons there to show you only perfect songs or only songs that pass the unbreakable rules, it gives you the first 10 that do that, and then you have a little more button, and you click that, and it gives you 10 more, and then another 10, and another 10, and so on. You can change how much more dig depth you're going to get. If you want, you can change this anywhere from 0 to 99. 0 would give you everything every time. 99 would give you a total of 99 every time you hit the more button. Uh, so you can change that accordingly, whatever you need it to be. In most cases, 10 is adequate. Some people like to have 20 or 30 or 50. If you're in a situation where you don't want anybody in the database at the same time as another Music Master user, you can set it up for single user. If you switch this to one, only one person would be allowed in the database at any given time. Yeah, that's under single user, and those are all found under additional properties. And there's a bunch of other things within here, but those are the ones we're going to talk about at this point. A couple other things I want to point out for you today before we wrap things up here in the next few minutes. On the Music Master Help menu, a couple of really cool features here, one of which is user registration. By clicking on user registration, Music Master goes out across the Internet and looks up your user key and finds out when your key is eligible for upgrades. That's done under user registration. That's also going to let you see what your serial number is. And it's a good idea to keep track of serial numbers in the event you lose a key or need a key replaced. Uh, we need the serial number so that we can know what key to turn on and what key needs replacing or what key needs upgrading and so on. And you can see that all under user registration. And of course I clicked on it and I'm going to have all these errors come up. <laughs> So it's telling us the key's not found normally, your serial number would be displayed right here. And you simply need to make note of that when you contact your scheduling consultant. Also in the help menu, check for update allows you to go out across the internet as long as you have full administrator rights on your music on your Music Master computer, you can go out on the internet and find the latest update that you're eligible for based on your user registration. Right now, our most recent update is 4.0, service release 15. Uh, service release 16 is due out probably in the next couple of days, it looks like. So when that comes out, if you did check for updates, Music Master would say, oh, 4.0 SR16 is now available. Would you like to go ahead and download it, etc.? And About Music Master lets you see what version number you're running. It also gives you access to the release notes and the license and so on. Another maintenance type of thing I'd like to point out for you today, before we wrap things up, is log note maintenance. If you come into data set, clocks, and log note text, this is the full list of all the log notes in the database. You can go through here and you can manually delete, you can manually add log notes to the database if you wish. Uh, just note that if you delete something and it's in use in a clock or in a schedule, it's going to leave a blank line in its place. So if we come here to invalid song 1169, Apparently I must have deleted that out of the library. I can hit delete and that line will be gone. So now anywhere that that line appeared in a clock will just be a white blank line. Additionally, you can run purge. Purge goes through, looks at all of your clocks and wipes out any log note that it doesn't find in use. Running purge is not undoable. There is no save after you run purge. Once you've purged it, those items are gone. So make sure that you, when you do this, you've made a backup first. And it can just be a, a standard backup if you want. That way you can restore it in the event it purged out log notes you actually did not want to get rid of. So we click Purge here. It's going to give us that warning. Purging used to un, will be undoable. Cannot undo purging of log notes. Hit yes. And we got rid of five of them in this database. I don't have a lot of log notes in here to start with. So once again, if you have questions about maintaining your database, setting up the backup profiles and so on, by all means contact your music scheduling consultant. We're always happy to help you out. If, uh, if you know your music scheduling consultant's name, you can just simply email them. Their first name at mmwin.com, so mine would be paul at mmwin.com. And if you don't have a support plan, you can email support 
at mmwin.com and we'll be able to get you some assistance that way as well. That actually wraps up my presentation for today. I appreciate you sticking around and, and bearing with me as I got those various errors today as a result of the software for my microphone. Uh, but thanks for bearing with me and I'm going to turn it back over to Mark Bolke. Thank you very much, Paul. Uh, like I said, uh, next week our session includes setting up weekend specials. And uh, we get a lot of calls about this, especially as we start heading into the summer months when we have Memorial Day weekend and, uh, and uh, Fourth of July and then Labor Day weekend. A lot of people do special programming. So uh, if you do that on a regular basis, it will certainly be helpful. And also if you're planning ahead for uh, specials coming up for the summer months, uh, it's a good, uh, this would be a good session to uh, be on next week. Make sure you go to the website click on the link for that specific session and re-register so you are uh, forwarded the emails um, with that invitation. So once again, we appreciate you being here today. We appreciate you as customers. And if there's anything we can do to help you out, please make sure you get a hold of us via, via email or by telephone. Uh, and we'll be happy to help you out. Thanks again, and thanks for using MusicMaster. Talk to you next week.